Uh, greetings, everyone. Welcome to the uh, another session of the webinar. Um, I welcome all the participants. Sir, sir. I hope uh, you will enjoy mm -hmm. this session. Mm -hmm. Uh, please, everybody, disable your mic. Yeah, I will request you to mute right uh, in and so that uh, this session goes smooth. And over to you, sir. You can start the session. At the end, we'll share you the uh, feedback form. Uh, everyone needs to fill that and get the, will get the certificate of participation. And what do you sir? You can start the session, and everyone can pin down their doubts so that they can interact with the speaker at the end. What do you sir? Uh, okay, hello everybody. Thank you, scholar. Uh, we will discuss today a topic, very interesting topic. It is application of sedimentology and petrology in oil separation and production. Uh, the petrology and sedimentology is describing the detailed. Uh, the detailed characteristic of the of the core in order to solve the reservoir heterogeneity solve the heterogeneity from describing the cutting to making a depositional model to making a reservoir prediction and this is what we will see now as uh, a sedimentology and the metrology it will be beneficial in all stages of uh, of reservoir from your exploration to explore to explore a new area to explore a new well to development to enhance your development, to optimize your development plan, and finally to enhancing the oil recovery. It, it, you, you will actually uh, use the petrology and sedimentology in the enhancing oil recovery as we will see in this slide. Uh, today we will try to cover what is the objective of sedimentological evaluation actually. What is a sedimentological evaluation? Why is the sedimentological characteristics is important to us as a hydrocarbon explorer, as a, uh, as a hydrocarbon developer, uh, as uh, enhanced oil recovery engineers or geologists or as a geologist. Uh, uh, what is the scale of sedimentological characterization? Uh, I have a cutting, I have a core, I have a logs. Not all the field contain a core, but all the field contain logs, contain gauge cutting. We will go through that. What is the hierarchical approach to reservoir characterization? Yes, it's good. I need to build my sedimentological model. I need to build my 3D facious model. How I can start? where where i can start and how i can start what is the reservoir quality analysis we will go through that what is the diagenesis what is the diagenesis model uh, what are the factors that enhance my reservoir quality and what which one distract my reservoir quality finally we will go through the reservoir formation damage uh, prediction and prevention we will we will make highlight for reservoir formation damage you have to know that about 60 percent <clears throat> of enhanced oil recovery technique making reservoir formation damage. Instead of enhancing the reservoir, you damage the reservoir. If you actually don't make a detailed reservoir characteristics of the factor, uh, the compatibility between your enhanced oil recovery fluid and the poor geometry and the poor component, we will see that in our presentation today. Uh, let us start. What is the objective? What is the sedimentological evaluation? Uh, we know this, this term, we hear it many times, but what is a sedimentological evaluation? Uh, for me, the sedimentological, the sedimentological evaluation has two categories. I need to predict the facious, facious production. Uh, I am, uh, uh, my well is a point, and I need to predict the facious away from this point. I need to predict the thicker sand, the thicker net gross away from my well, away from my point. Uh, I need I need to 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 drill many many development well. I need to explore new areas. So the sedimentological evaluation, composed of or it, I can categorize it into facious prediction model. Facious prediction, including re reservoir quality prediction, including facious analysis, including sequence stratigraphic interpretation. I need to explore a, a new area as a geologist, as a reservoir geologist. I need to, 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 to develop, I need to explore another areas away from my wells. So this sedimentological evaluation. Another arm of the sedimentological evaluation is the reservoir discrimination and optimization. Actually, we, <clears throat> we are as a geologist, as a reservoir geologist, uh, uh, we need to deliver to the reservoir engineer, uh, not a static model, we need to deliver to it or, or we need actually to convert our static reservoir into dynamic reservoir. Uh, let us explain in more details 
uh, I need to convert the static discrimination of my phases, the static discrimination of my reservoir into dynamic. So the reservoir discrimination, as we know from metrophysics, is making a regression equation by porosity and permeability. Uh, this may be good or this may be effective in the classic, but in the non-classic, uh, it will not work at all because I need first to discriminate my reservoir based on the factors controlling the reservoir quality based on the factors that control the permeability, control the efficiency of the fluid to flow For, from the sense action, from the core, uh, the permeability or the, or the ability of the fluid to flow is mainly controlled by the textures, mainly controlled by the rock properties, mainly controlled by the pore geometry. Uh, so if I discriminate first my reservoir based on this parameter and then force it uh, I can see force it. I can say force it. Force it. The petrophysicist to this to 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 create a regression equation from porosity permeability relationship based on my description. I will I will uh, discriminate the reservoir actually based on the factor controlling the hydraulic flow. I will deliver to the reservoir engineer optimized reservoir discrimination. This is the two arms of the sediment logical evaluation. I need a facious production. Uh, in, in exploration, in development, I need to discriminate my reservoirs into actual hydraulic flow units based on the actual factors that control the reservoir quality, not only based on porosity permeability regression equation or porosity permeability relationships that we will see in the next slides. <clears throat> Why the sediment logical? Why the sediment logical characteristic is important? You have to know that all the reservoirs are heterogeneous. Uh, in, 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 in the basis of converting the reservoir from static to dynamic, all the reservoirs are heterogeneous. Uh, for, uh, the heterogeneity of the reservoir come from the depositional processes, and they come from the, the factors after deposition, which are known as the diagenesis. So the to unlock this reservoir heterogeneity, unlock this uh, depositional and diagenetic characteristics, I have to go in deep into the sediment logical characteristic. The, the geometry of the reservoir body, the geometry of the sand body, it is, it is one of our targets in, as a reservoir geologist or as exploration geologist to know the geometry of my reservoir, to know the flow barriers, the permeability barriers, the, the puffles between the reservoirs, and actually the sweet zones or the high permeability zones. Uh, it is very critical to, to identify these zones. Uh, in order to identify these factors, I have to go in deep into the sediment logical and the metrological characteristics. I have to go to the sun sections. I have to go to the poor and the poor geometry and the spaces beside this poor. What are the actual factors that affect the permeability zones? What is the high permeability zones? I need to, in some, in, in some wells during development or during protection, I have to keep away from these high permeable zones. Uh, many of us making enhanced recovery like acid stimulation by uh, pull heading uh, and all of the stimulated fluid goes through the high permeable zone, which already uh, efficient, which already effective. So, Identifying this zone is very critical. Identifying the geometry of the, my reservoir body is one of the logical characteristics, the flow barriers. The net to grass, you have to know that the net to grass itself is different from depositionals within the same depositional setting. For example, the fluvial setting. I have a braided uh, channels and I have meandering channel. You have to know that the net to grass in the braided channel is completely different from the net to grass in the <clears throat> in the meandering the channels, in the braided and in the meandering, the net to grass completely different. So identifying the sedimentological characteristics and identifying the depositional system will make me better understanding for the net to gross, uh, actual optimize my calculation to the net to gross and is a distribution also of the net to gross. I have to distribute the net to gross in 2D maps or in 3D maps in, 3, in my model. My maps and my model have to be effective and have to be Linked with the net to grass. So the net to grass differ from the positional environment. Within the same depositional setting, you will see different net to grass. The net to grass actually will affect on our stipe and our gas in place. So my 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 understanding or my sedimentological characteristics 
will be optimizing in a stripe calculation and gas oil in place calculation. There is a var quality evaluation and production. I need to actually know, I need to actually know uh, uh, my, there is a var quality of my reservoir and uh, my, my next new well delivery team, my next well development or exploration or exploratory wells, what is the reservoir quality in this new well? I need to make a prediction for reservoir quality. This is one of the characteristics of the sedimentological and the petrological evaluation. The reservoir formation damage, protection, and, pre and prevention. You have to know that <clears throat> in enhanced oil recovery, fly with an enhanced oil recovery technique, if it's not compatible or incompatible with uh, poor quality, with the poor geometry, with, uh, with the mineralogy, with the factors controlling the reservoir quality will make formation damage instead of enhancing my reservoir quality. Recently, uh, in Gulf of South, we have make uh, the reservoir engineer used a production fluid or completion fluid and not compatible with the reservoir, completion fluid of fresh water and the reservoir contain highly percentages of elite clay minerals, which act as a higher I fibrous. So this is a change in salinity this, this is a change in salinity making the reservoir formation damage. The, the PROSPER model say to us, we will produce 1,000 well, 1,000 parallel of oil. After using this incompatible completion fluid, we, uh, the production uh, uh, decreased to 150 and is in zero production. That's very critical. You have to know what are the factors that affect my reservoirs. What are the factors that affect my permeability? My enhanced oil recovery techniques, it will make enhancing in, in recovery actually, or will damage my reservoir. It's very, very critical. I have worked in core laboratory lab in Egypt and UK and in Emirates uh, in reservoir formation damage unit. You, many, many, many wells damaged by incompatible and rock properties flout. So these are the main characteristics of the sedimentological uh, and the petrological techniques, the main importance of the petrological and sedimentological techniques. Uh, at this stage, I have to know what are the scales of, uh, what, oh, I'm sorry. I need to know what are the scales of sedimentological characteristics. I have many data. I have many, many and, and many data. I have, uh, I have a core, I have a logs, I have a image, a poor health image. What are the scales of this sedimentological characteristics? Uh, actually, uh, I use all of kind of data. I, my, my optimum target or my target is to uh, simulate my reservoirs act to, to be act as an outcrop. So I will use all kinds of data, starting from the prop, uh, the prop which is uh, making a chemical analysis for a few, uh, for many uh, milligrams of, of frogs to make a chemical analysis, <clears throat> which while describing the provenance, uh, the source of the sediment supply, I, I have the core and the core is very critical. As you know, the core is a ground truss on the depositional sitting and prostate permeability uh, measurement. You have to know that the only tool uh, who measures the actual permeability is a core. Uh, no one told me the NMR and all of these techniques and all of the estimation of the plus. The core is the only tool that gives you an actual or uh, if, if, top, if sure effect corrected by Klinkenberg, an actual permeability. But between the probe and the core, I have a ditch cutting. Many of many, many companies uh, unused the, 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 the drilling cutting. The drilling cutting is very critical. Many companies uh, throw it in the desert or in the sea. So I have to use it. It is very critical. If I make a sense section or a scanning electron microscope or an XRD analysis, I can easily to know the poor geometry. I can easily to detect which factor control my reservoir quality. I can by many, by some analysis, can interpret the depositional environment. If I find the fresh gluconite, I can tell to you that I am in a shallow marine setting, in a, in a tidal <clears throat> or in a shore face setting. So the analysis, the petrological analysis of the flooding cutting is very critical. I then I have to upscale 
the, the core description and the depositional environment I interpreted from the conventional core, I have to upscale it to the logs. Uh, not all the fields contain core, but all the fields and all the walls contain logs. So I have to upscale my core plugs into logs. Each step from the, from here, from the trailing cutting, from the core plug is very critical. Uh, for example, yeah, the core shaft, the core shaft to logs is very critical. The core itself, you have to describe it uh, in, in more detail. You have to, 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 to make a bound. I can make a webinar with you to how to describe the core, to how to get an optimum data from the core. Uh, all of I have to upscale, as I said, to logs, then upscale it to, to, to grid and the cell simulation by integration of seismic data. I have to integrate the pie stratigraphy data, the pressure data, and geochemical analysis. All of this will optimize my grid model. My geological and simulation model. Uh, all of this, all, all of the beta scale will be make a vertical stacking pattern by using a sequence stratigraphy and para sequence and para sequence set, which is the optimum tool for production. I have to, in, I have to use all of this scale to simulate my subsurface reservoir to be looks like an outcrop. As a geologist, if I look to the outcrop, I can. I can detect the buffles, I can detect the barrier, I can detect the, the, the extension of my sand body, I can uh, interpret the environment, I can even predict uh, the, the characteristics of the reservoir, making a sediment logical sequence stratigraphy model to predict the areas away from my outcrop. So the scale of sediment logical characteristic is very critical and very important. No piece of data, in any piece of data, you have to use it. The trailing cutting, we have to wait, uh, look back to the trailing cutting in more details. Now we can make a capillary pressure, mercury injection data from the core brush to know the poor throat distribution. All of this. In order to build, in order to build my sediment logical characteristic model, in order to uh, making my subsurface analog to act to locks like the outcrop, I have to follow this hierarchy. This is my hierarchy, and I work it very effective. It will lead you to track every piece of data from the sand section to the logs to the 3D model. Uh, actually, this hierarchy is the optimized hierarchy to get highly predictive model. I will start it with the petrographic observation. I will lock to the, to, to, to the sample itself. I will lock to the pore, to the geometry of the pore, knowing actually what factors controlling my pore. Then discriminate the reservoirs based on the factors controlling the reservoir quality, based on the factors controlling my, my, my ability or my efficiency of the rock to, to conduct. Okay, uh, so I my hierarchy started with a petrographic observation, detailed analysis for for the rock to know the poor scale heterogeneity factors affecting the poor quality. Then upscale it with using the core description into a term known as I called it lithophaceous or lithotype. I called it also as optimized rock type. This lithotype is a depositional and the dynamics reservoir quality descriptors. I describe my core and my reservoirs based on the factors controlling my reservoir quality. You will have a term known as a uh, muddy laminated sandstone, for example, SM. You will actually understand is that you have a sandstone with a muddy laminated, so the permeability, the horizontal permeability will be more effective than the vertical permeability. I discriminate my reservoir into flow units, into the positional dynamic units based on the actual factors I get it from the sense section that control my reservoir quality. This is in the core scale or in the drilling cutting scale. I have to upscale it uh, to, to, to use it in the logs. I, I then upscale it into the positional packages, which is vertical depositional packages controlled by reservoir quality organization. I will I will discriminate my, my reservoir or my core will discriminate it based on the depositional packages. Its packages has a flow reservoir quality characteristics. Uh, you, can, you can imagine that this package act as 
uh, a tube act as a, a hydraulic optimized hydraulic flow unit. This hydraulic flow unit completely differ from this hydraulic flow unit. So I upscale the lysotype into depositional packages. Then I need to upscale it into the uncored interval and the uncored wells and create what is known as genetic elements, which is reservoir component, geometry and dimensions by, by upscaling what is a, this factors from the core and use a depositional package and the reflect of the core in the uncored well and the uncored intervals by core to lock calibration. And they make a genetic, genetic element of my reservoirs in 2D. Then upscale it into 3D model, into reservoir architecture and stratigraphy model. You have to imagine if you use this hierarchy, you will finally deliver to your engineer or deliver your, 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 your the static model into dynamic model. For example, these genetic elements, I know the factors controlling its reservoir quality. When I'm moving in this direction, it will be changed into another genetic element, which have completely different reservoir quality analysis, completely different <coughs> factors controlling the hydraulic flow and the permeability. So this is the hierarchy I use to build my sediment logical and my production model from metrography to sedimentology. I will use during this journey, all of this, all of other data in this stage, I use a biostratigraphy data and geochemical data and also the seismic data if it if it has a high quality. And also can I have to use outcrops analog, I have to use a poor hole image sure to build my depositional module, my depositional packages in the uncurved wells and uncurved intervals. Uh, let us start by the, 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 the black scale heterogeneity or the petrographic observation or the lysotype. Let us start with it. Creating a lysotype. The lysotype is a descriptive term. I discriminate my reservoir or my, no, or my units based on the depositional and the diagenetic factors control the reservoir quality. For example, here I have eliminated sandstone. So the elimination is a depositional char char characteristics, a depositional characteristic. And at the upper part, I have a muddy laminated sandstone. The permeability and the, uh, and the hydraulic units are, or the optimized truck type of the laminated sandstone completely differ from the mud laminated sandstone. The massive sandstone, the, the hydraulic mud prone sand, uh, siltstone or mudstone, the conglomerate. I, I describe my core, I describe my data based on the depositional factor control my reservoir. This is uh, this is the track or this is the key. Then uh, as Ahmed or as a sedimentologist, I use I use this, this descriptive the descriptors or I use this uh, terminology or this lysotype terms <clears throat> into nominate the core plug. We, we all know that the core plug is uh, nominated as one, two, three, four, and so on. Uh, H, H plug number, one, for example, has its porosity, permeability, grand density, saturation, and so on. If you nominate your core plug with this terminology or with these descriptors, so you could you have the core plug porosity and permeability value and saturation value, and at the same time, you can understand the depositional factors control the permeability. If you have, uh, for example, a uh, uh, a high horizontal permeability, very high horizontal permeability. You will find it here. So my, I use uh, this description. I use this lysotype terminology to uh, numbering or, or or use it for core black coding. So I will have I can lock to the porosity permeability value and knowing the porosity permeability value and what is the depositional factors controlling these values. Uh, I hope uh, everything is clear. This is known as a lysotype, or I call it as optimized drug type. I converted the reservoir from a static into the positional dynamic, uh, into, the, into the positional dynamic and reservoir quality descriptors. You will find that you have nothing lost in terms of prediction. Uh, actually, you will get more or you will get gain in terms of reservoir quality understanding and the consistency. You build a vertical stacking pattern, a vertical succession from <clears throat> the core plug and the core analysis and, and link it with the depositional 
and uh, factors controlling reservoir heterogeneity. Uh, let us get uh, this, an example of this language, as I have said. Uh, this is a deep marine turbidite system. I have low density turbidite, high density turbidite, and hybrid bed. As you know, is a hybrid bed is a gravity flow bed uh, consisting the flow amalgamation of uh, debris flow and the amalgamation of turbidity flow. Uh, for example, uh, I, I replaced the nomenclature of hybrid units with my LISO type nomenclatures. So, uh, for example, uh, uh, for this dewater the sandstone, I have a, a, a difference in the horizontal permit. I have a difference in the anisotropy. You will can, for example, in the cemented dewater the sheet, you will have a, a vertical permeability is much higher than the horizontal permeability. But in the consolidated sandstone, you will have the horizontal permeability is much higher than the vertical permeability. All of this and isotropy factors will affect in your reservoir quality distribution and reservoir quality analysis. Many of us, many of petrophysicists, uh, from my point of view, using the horizontal permeability. Uh, porosity and the horizontal permeability for, uh, as we see from this profile. But actually the anisotropy between the vertical and the horizontal permeability will give me a different understanding or may give give me a better understanding of reservoir heterogeneity. So replacing the normal nomenclature into LISO types will lead me to identify which factor controlling the reservoir quality, which factor converting my static plug into dynamic. So this core plug, I, for, for, for example, I have an isotropy between the vertical and horizontal permeability. So what is the reason? The rock typing will give you the reason. The LISO types or the petro type or the optimized rock type will give you the reason. I have a cemented dewater sheet and the heave, I have a consolidated laminated sheet. If these are two different depositional setting, the lateral extension of the consolidated and the laminated, sorry, consolidated laminated will be different from this of the water sheet. So I have here to track the vertical permeability, but here's a horizontal permeability. From the beginning, I'm saying reservoir quality, reservoir quality, reservoir quality. What is the reservoir quality? The reservoir quality is the study of the porosity or the storage capacity and the efficiency of the rock to conduit this fluid. Uh, actually, we know that the hydrocarbon is reside within the pore and controlled by the pore geometry, not only by the pore geometry, controlled by actual factors controlling the pore geometry. So uh, is the is understanding of the horizontal and uh, the porosity and permeability will, will unravel the reservoir quality? Actually not. I have to know what are the factors that control this pore geometry. The, the hydrocarbon exists within the pore geometry. So this pore geometry, uh, what are the factors that make this uh, connected pore spaces? Uh, into this is connected to the other pore spaces. Uh, if the fluid need to flow from this pore to this pore, what are the depositional and the diagenetic factors control this fluid flow, control the efficiency of the fluid to flow? So there is a work quality, not just to study the porosity and permeability, but also I have to track the factors controlling the pore geometry, which depositional factors controls the porosity and by the way the permeability and the diagenetic factors. I will study by petrography all of this factor. So I have the core plug, I have the factors controlling my reservoir quality. This is the foundation of reservoir quality. If I covered all of these skills, I get the, the actual foundation of reservoir quality. This is the fine scale reservoir characterization, which you define the reservoir heterogeneity which defines the reservoir uncertainty and actually will be used in the reservoir predictability. Uh, if you define all of this factor, you will use your petrotype in all stages. As we said in the production, by knowing the mineralogy and the, the, the sensitive minerals, which may damage the reservoir if I used incompatible fluid. 
in the development skill, it will mean optimized my development well to track the actual sand, which has the actual reservoir quality on it, which has the optimized hydraulic flow on it. And the exploration will lead me to predict the reservoir quality and the product the depositional environment. So that my production will be controlled also, not, not just send the distribution, but controlled by reservoir quality. This is very, very critical. Uh, let, us, let, us, uh, let us go through what are the factors that they de de degrade the reservoir quality. Uh, what are the, the main factors that decrease reservoir quality? Uh, the factors that decrease the reservoir quality is much higher than the factors that increase the reservoir quality. So if I addressed these factors, I will know the actual factors that control my reservoir quality. The, the, the diagenesis pro, the diagenesis or sorry, sorry, the primary depositional control, the grain size, which controls the permeability, the sorting, the clay abundance and the clay distribution, the lamination and the dewatering, and do we see we saw in the previous slide how the dewatered affect the, the permeability and isotropy. The factors that come after deposition, the mineralogy cementation, the clay cement, the light, the smectite, all of these minerals which controlled my poor geometric heterogeneity. And also we can go through the second tectonic controls which deform it or enhance the reservoir quality. So these are the main control of reservoir quality. For myself, I, 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 I make it the main control of reservoir heterogeneity. The main factors that convert my static reservoir units into dynamic depositional units, the sorting, the trital mineralogy. Maybe in another webinars, we will go in details in each item and how it affects the reservoir quality, how it affects the permeability. The sorting, for example, if I, if, if I have the fluid here and this fluid need to produce, so it has to move from here to here. So it will blocked by this obstacle. It will block by this bad sorting. So the sorting, one of the maximum factors affecting my reservoir quality and my ability of the rock to condense with fluid, the green shape, the ductility, the green size, <clears throat> how it affects the permeability. We know when was higher grain size, higher permeability. The fabric and packing, the so cubic packing and or thrombing packing of the greens affects the porosity and the permeability. It actually, the cubic packing increases the permeability by about 20% rather than the thrombing packing. So the genetic factor after deposition, this is the depositional factors and this is what happened after deposition. The cementation, the solutions that come into the pore and, and the collapses the pore throat. And the, and the block my, it's a poor throat to prevent my flow to flow. The green dissolution, which enhances my reservoir quality, the hydrocarbonic charge and its effect in decreasing the diagenesis, the mechanical compaction, the chemical compaction. This is the factors that I discriminate first my reservoir based on them before going to the porosity permeability relationships. So I need to understand the reservoir quality. I need to, uh, uh, ha, as Ahmed, how I can, uh, as a sedimentologist, how I can understand the control on reservoir quality. I'm making this hierarchy. I'm making these questions. Uh, I, I go through different questions. If the question is yes, I will neglect the other example. For example, I ask myself in the first. Sorry. First, I ask myself, does the fabric or does the depositional parameters controlled more than 80% of the variation in porosity and permeability? If yes, if I got from the description that the texture and the fabric and the depositional criteria controlled my porosity and permeability, I will focus only on defining my sediment logical model. I will not go, I will, I will not waste time in, in diagenesis model and the diagenesis analysis. If the answer is yes, yes, the depositional criteria, the textures and the fabric control more than 80% of porosity and permeability variation and distribution, I will focus on that, my sediment logical model. This will make me to make optimized prediction variation of the depositional environment of the natural grass, of the sand distribution geometry, and also 
making a production or making a special variation for sobriety and permeability. This is the actual factor, actual depositional factors controlling the porosity, the porosity and permeability, con making porosity modeling. The, the porosity controlled mainly by sorting the green shape, the green type, the distribution of grain, and the matrix. And this is known as texture maturity, texture and the compositional maturity. By defining or by addressing this, this uh, factors, I can, I can make model for my porosity, optimized model for my prostate. This is an undiagenetic. This is a depositional factors control the prostate. What about the permeability model? <clears throat> the permeability model, uh, uh, it looks like hard, it looks like complicated, but actually it is very simple. Uh, in, in the permeability model, we, we have to think that convert the, the static units, that convert my rock, my reservoirs into tube. That's very simple. I need to think in this way. I need to convert my static units into tube. The diameter of this tube is the poor throat. Uh, what are the factors that control this poor throat? I have to understand it. Uh, what are the changes in the flow pass? So by understanding these factors that convert, that control my conversion of the static reservoir units into poor, into tubes, I will understand the poor throat and this is the diameter of this, the diameter of this tube is a poor throat, as a poor throat size, the poor network connectivity. What is the factors in this tube? Uh, what is the factors controlling the fluid flow in this tube? And what are the parameters that differ, that makes this tube different from the other tube or another tube? So by understanding this depositional criteria, this side, I will make optimized positive model and, per, and also permeability model. But in this stage, in if 80% if of the depositional criteria controls the positive permeability variation. But if not. Achievement for you. If you think one or one lecture. Sorry. Uh, could you switch off the mic, please? Uh, let's other question. If the compaction, if the compaction controlled my reservoir quality, not the depositional criteria. If I found, if I found that the, the compaction is con, is explaining the porosity and permeability variation that not explained by the depositional criteria, the compaction. I will go through compaction model to understand the compaction with depths to, to predict the porosity permeability variation with depths. I will focus only to building a convection model. Uh, it, I will be supported by support pressure team in this way to predict the porosity permeability variation with depth. But uh, if not, and the cementation, <clears throat> I count all the porosity permeability variability and uh, all, the, all the, the cementation controlled or the porosity and permeability variation that not accounted by the texture or not accounted by the convection. I will go through the making a diagenetic model. I will focus to make a diagenetic and geomechanical model to understand the factors controlled my quality. And in this way, I will predict the cement in the unexplored area or in the undeveloped areas. And this is the depositional factors control my reservoir quality or control my flow to flow. The diagenesis. The diagenesis is very critical. And you have to make a parogenetic sequence. What is the parogenetic sequence? I have to make a time relationship with the factors affecting my reservoir quality. I have to know in, in which stage the cementation con, con, blocked my poor throat, the compaction, the dissolution which enhanced my reservoir quality. I have to build this diagenetic model based on the porosity enhancing and or based on the degrading in permeability. So I understand in this well that the Felispar dissolution, for example, is the main factors that increase my porosity, that increase my permeability, may, that increase my reservoir quality. 
and also the calcite dissolution. So I have to track just these zones. If I need to get to, to, to convert my, my lesotype, to convert my static model into dynamic. So the diagenetic model, if I found that the diagenesis is the only controls the process and permeability distribution, I have to build this time relationship for the diagenetic factors control the reservoir quality. So at this stage, I have a porosity and permeability value. And H value, uh, I know the factors controlling the reservoir quality by studying uh, the lesotype or the optimized petrotypes. In H core plugs, I know that this cementation is destroyed. There is a prosody and permeability, Sklenkenberg permeability and prosody. So my drugs, but the massive sandstone and the dewatered sandstone is the highest reservoir quality. I have to track it laterally and they define the factors that just control it. But I, the problem that, 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 that the lesotype or the interpreted petrotype is the closer resolution of my logs. I need to upscale it. I need to, to get a bridge to the log scale because I have I, I make all of this analysis in the core or in the trailing cutting. I have to upscale it in the in the uncored interval or uncored wells to <clears throat> by to, to, to integrate it to the log scale or, or the whole image. If I have an borehole image, it will be great the greater point to upscale my lysotype. So I'm making another. Uh, descriptive beta stacking known as a depositional package. My depositional package is a genetically related, the genetically related, uh, as a, the genetically related types of petrotypes have the same depositional criteria. I have upscaled my lesotypes. This is my lesotype upscaled into depositional packages. So, this, this depositional packages is genetically related. Uh, genetically related contain many types of many kinds of lysotype which have the same reservoir quality characteristics, which addressed all the factors controlling the reservoir quality, whether these factors is depositional or diagenetic. I, I, I can from this depositional package just understand that the P, I can track P1, for example, depositional packages which is a flow unit, a flow zone optimized hydraulic unit, differ from P2 and P3. I have to keep away P5, P6. This is the upscaling from lysotypes into depositional packages. I will use these depositional packages to cover the uncored interval and uncored wells. By making this up, this, this is a scheme. This is my scheme for upscaling the, the least type into the depositional packages. I will use uh, the sandstone and isotropy for conglomerate, for example. I will I will check all of the least type which have the same and the sandstone and isotropy to known as P1. The amalgamated sandstone, for example, as B2. I will check the decreasing in sandstone isotropy and in the netto grass. So my depositional packages, even I can understand or I can use it to predict my net to gross values. What are the value of these depositional packages? I know I have mentioned it in the previous slides, but you have to know that these depositional packages cover everything in the nested descriptors in the petrotypes based on the factors controlling my reservoir quality. It contain many core blocks which coded by the petrotypes. The, I can understand or I can track only the zones which have the same reservoir quality. So my my genetic element depositional, my genetic element distribution will be tracked B3, B2, B1, for example. So all of this data tell now on the core block or on the conventional core. I need to convert it into conceptual model. I need to convert to, to get a decision. I will not get a decision on a core block or in a depositional core. I have to convert it into core. As we know, we are living in a free world of core, in a free core environment. So the depositional package can be de determined or can be modified if you have a poor hole image. The poor hole image is very, very, very critical tool. 
uh, it actually will give user azimuth and the paleo current interpretation that cannot that you can't get from the core. The core will you will have uh, for example, P1 and P2. I need to know the aerial distribution of P1 and P2. It will be by poor hole image. The poor hole image, the upscaling of the depositional package from the core to the, by the poor hole image will give you as much data, will give you the paleo currents that control, that will give you the clue to predict your reservoir. So the upscaling is very critical because we live in a core free world. This is the stages of upscale. I have to use the camera, the core gamma ray. I have to make a core to uh, anchor. I have to make a core shift. It's very critical to get all of the depositional packages to anchor well and anchored intervals. And if I get a detailed borehole image analysis, depositional interpretation or sedimentological impression from the borehole image, you will get the paleo current for each depositional packages and the track it lateral. So at this time, I get the depositional packages. I get, I link it to the distribution of the borehole image to get a genetic element, which is a reservoir component, dimensions, and geometry of my reservoir. I will, I will go through the. So if I go through this workflow, I will enter. You will have to know that your reservoir, laterally and vertically, discriminate based on the actual factors that control the quality. This is an example of the marine turbidites, which we mentioned it to it before. It contains <clears throat> from three main, three main settings. Uh, all of this setting has a complete differ vertical stacking pattern. The major trunk distributary channel fell, for example, have a different aerial distribution. It distributed vertically. It, it is amalgamated channel distributed vertically. But if we go to the distributary channels of the deep marine turbidites, the aerial distribution differ from that of the major trunk, the lobes and the stone, and the entral lobe. You can get this optimized discriminate, discrimination. You will, without detailed petrological and sedimentological characteristics. If we need to go in to look in deep about this distributory channels, I will have it. it I I converted this cross section. I converted into three depositional package, three dynamic fact. This tube or the production performance of the zones of this amalgamated sandstone, amalgamated deposit sandstone completely differ from this massive sandstone. Uh, I have discriminate vertical stacking pattern of the amalgamated sandstone into not just the depositional factors, but into petrotypes controlling the hydraulic flow. I have to track this amalgamated channels with from this erosive base. This erosive base act as a permeability barrier from this zone to this zone. Sure, I can confirm this discrimination by pressure data or and uh, by pressure data, so I can discriminate it will confirm my discrimination. Or this this detailed analysis of vertical stacking vector and vertical heterogeneity only come from integrated uh, sedimentological and petrological analysis. Sure, you will track P1 and P2 and P3 zones, which actually exist in the highly turbidity current. So I will make a real distribution for each effective zones and neglect another factors which will not act, which will not have a permeability. So the aerial distribution of my reservoir will based on this depositional packages. This is the workflow, or this is the, 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 the internal architecture heterogeneity of the reservoir. I will describe the data in details to get a genetic elements. The vertical and the aerial stacking pattern of these genetic elements will give me, will increase my, 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 my scale of modeling. I need this scale of modeling. Believe, believe me that the, 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 the modeling, which will not go through with this hierarchy, will be not accurate. So following this scale of analysis and following this 
scale of descriptions will give you optimized descriptive model. Uh, finally, I will get the thought of Arnold Puma during his award of Sydney Power Memorial 2007 that there is a still discoveries. If we go to the rock, if we go in deep to the poor geometry, if we go in deep to the factors controlling my reservoir, if you tracked the factor, if you picked the factors controlling your reservoir quality, and they make a full analysis, you will actually making optimized prediction for your model. This is a summary of what Arnold Puma say. Uh, thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, I will be happy. Uh, and uh, I hope to meet you in another webinar for detailed investigation. If you have any question, please feed me back.